Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this is uh, June 3rd, uh, 2015, 7 p.m. here in the City Commission Chambers. I want to welcome everyone here to be watching either by uh, Government Access Channel, uh, KOFO Radio, or of course here in the Chambers as well. So let's start with our roll call, please. Mayor Skidmore. Present. Commissioner Dickinson. Present. Commissioner Kaler. Present. Commissioner Reed. Present. Commissioner Geis. Present. We're all here and accounted for, so great to see everybody here. We'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance, followed with invocation by Richard Oglesby. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we read through God's word, he, we, we find that the Apostle Paul sent a letter to Timothy and he, he told him that you should pray for the kings and those that are in authority, that we might live peaceful and quiet lives. So let us pray tonight. Father, we are here tonight, God, and we pray for those that are in authority here in our community, God. Lord, we pray that you give them wisdom. God, we pray that you would give them direction. God, we pray for this city for safety. We pray for those that protect us, God, our police, our fire. God, be with them. Protect them, Lord. And all these things, Lord, we just ask, be here tonight, and we give you the praise and the glory for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. We've got Mr. Oglesby busy tonight, not only the invocation tonight, but also on our consent agenda. We have an approval for him to be appointed to the Planning Commission. We also have a, an approval for a term extension for the Planning Commission for Brandon Livingston. A uh, slight change on this on the agenda. That will be until the new appointment can be made instead of one month. So we're going to mention that in there just to change that uh, until a new appointment can be made. That could be next week or it could be six weeks. We don't know how long that may take. And of course, the minutes from the May 6th meeting, the May 20, uh, regular meetings, May 11th, uh, May 18th, study sessions, May 15th, special call meeting for a public hearing on a rehab grant. And do I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Let's go on to number 10, public comments. I, we do have some public comments, I understand, so let me just mention the, the, what we require on this. Uh, persons who wish to address the City Commission regarding items on the agenda may do so as the agenda item is called. Persons who wish to address the City Commission regarding items not on the agenda and that are under the jurisdiction of City Commission may not do so at this time when called on by the Mayor. Comments on personal mat personnel matters and matters pending in the court or other outside tribunals are not permitted and speakers are limited to three minutes. Any presentation is for information purposes only and no action will be taken. So I understand Mr. Hurt, you have some public comments. I will remind we just have three minutes and if you get to the end of three minutes and I'll let you finish your thought then we'll need to stop. Okay. Thank you. I am Gene Hurt. Is it on? Yes. Is it? Okay. I am Gene Hurt. I live at 107 Jefferson Street in Cremona, Kansas now. I have a comment and uh, a question. The first thing I want to do is ask the question. Today on the airport, can it handle the, the jets to come in to land and fuel and take back off now? My understanding, yes. Well, uh, the answer to that is yes and no, okay? Um, if we go the 500 more feet, uh, jets will be able to land uh, more frequently and their insurance carriers will like it. <coughs> jets can land now, but that's between they and their insurance carriers. And it is especially critical in hot weather um, that uh, how heavy a, of a load you have in fuel when it comes to taking off. So jets can land now. <coughs> <clears throat> it's up to their insurance carriers if they will let them land on that runway. When we add 500 feet, 501 more feet, that will accommodate most general aviation jets. Okay. 
Okay, you answer your question? Now, <clears throat> I just attended your <coughs> meeting with the county on the intermodem down there. Now, about a week and a half ago, I got a phone call from a gentleman that I used to work with at Allied Signal for 31 years. He now works for a company. They are interested to give a proposal down here, which you know, I didn't wasn't able to talk tonight there or anything, so I decided to come down here. But there's two words that scares him and some others that have looked at the chart. And they did me back in 2007, and it still does today. Those two words are floodplain. Okay. You're going to have to address that with them on how they can feel that this floodplain isn't going to infect it with them if they would build there or want to work a deal with you. So you, I am only saying this because that is one of the questions that he has right now is floodplain. I know it was only mentioned by one person tonight, and that was Larry Railroad. But no major discussion on the word floodplain. And when you look at that chart and you see that massive floodplain, I can see why. So that's all I had. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hurt. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll go on to item number 11. At this point, I'd like to ask the commissioners if any, uh, do you declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially? Everybody good with that? We'll go on to number 12. <clears throat> Recognition of City Attorney Bob Bezik upon the upcoming retire his upcoming retirement. Okay, it's never too late, Bob. You sure? <laughs> All right. I couldn't find it on my agenda to begin with. Yeah, so. sure. Well, after 28 years at the City of Ottawa, Bob Bezik will be retiring this month. <laughs> um, I just thought I'd tell you that the most special person in Bob's household is Jetty because she is a fellow Emporian, and you might find this <laughs> Hard to believe, but she actually knows my aunt. Mm -hmm. But she's not your aunt. No, well, no, Jetty's not my okay, aunt. Okay, I'm not <laughs> no, just no, making well, sure. Well, you're not related. There, well, there is a possibility here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do I need Kleenex? <laughs> Um, Bob, uh, Bob's been, um, Bob's been through a lot. Bob and Jetty have been through a lot the past year. Um, some of which uh, uh, he shared with me the health of his father and, and working through that, and um, uh, the the implications of what that meant for Bob and what that meant for Jetty as they go forward, and. Um, um, Bob came to me one day and said, I am, um, you know, I've, I've really kind of given this some thought. Actually, what he said was, we have given this some thought. <laughs> he said, Jetty and I have given this some thought, and there's really some things we'd like to do, and, and we think that this is a good time for us to step out, a good transition um, for, for me to leave what I'm doing and move on in the next phase of my life. You have to respect that because we all get there, um, and we all take different processes, of thought processes about how we get there. But what I do appreciate about Bob is that he cares very much about his family, and he cares very much about Jetty here, who is an important part of his life, and he wants to um, have time to enjoy the next season of his life. So. Um, I've known Bob for eight years, and Bob, I have had some outstanding city attorneys in my 35-year career, and I would, uh, uh, there, there, there are three that I would rank as really top city attorneys, and Bob is one of those city attorneys. And one of those attorneys, when Bob came and talked to me about this, I thought, well, well maybe I ought to um, try and 
And one of those, and I got to thinking about one of the top city attorneys that I really like, I really worked well with, um, is a gentleman that um, died at uh, about 53 years of age from cancer. And I thought, you know, none of us thought that was going to happen. None of us saw that coming. And uh, I, I think I, I understand this, and, and so um, I, it's time. Um, I've known Bob as a professional. Bob has served this city. I haven't been here all 28 years. But what I do know is that Bob has served this city with his soul. It has probably been difficult for him at times to separate the city and Bob Besick, and that's a good thing. Um, I've worked with Bob on a number of other boards. Uh, Bob served as a board attorney when I was chair of another um, entity in town, and Bob gave as much attention and detail to that entity as what he did to the city. But his love has been the city of Ottawa and the citizens of Ottawa. And um, Bob's been a personal <coughs> friend. I entrusted Bob with if my daughters hear me say this, I'll get in deep trouble, so please don't tell them. But I entrusted Bob to work with my two daughters on two separate issues, which I felt they needed a third-party counsel that wasn't their father. They needed somebody that was um, that could focus in on what they needed to have done, and they didn't need an emotional father telling them, here's what I think you ought to do. So I entrusted Bob in doing that, and he did that um, very well, and my daughters were um, better off for that. But as I told Bob's family here, we've had a tough time trying to get him to agree to a reception, um, uh, to doing something. So I don't want you to think that we are on the cheap. <laughs> we are not on the cheap. <laughs> we had an extravaganza with shrimp, oh. prime rib. Okay, we were going to do that, but you see nothing back there now. That's because of your brother. Okay, that's because of Bob. But thank you, Bob, for your service to this community, and thank you for your service to the commissioners that you have served over. 28 years and a lot of them are up there and thank you to the service that you have given to the staff and the employees of this city and to the city manager I s certainly appreciate it and wish you well in retirement and thank you for letting us have Bob mm -hmm. and good luck introductions are in order. Uh, with us today is my sister Peg Van Wagner and her husband Roger Van Wagner and my sister Patty who's right <laughs> over there Patricia Marie when we're mad at her uh, and her daughter Megan. Uh, not present but I believe watching on live stream are my brothers Billy and my brothers Tommy. Were they here you would see them like this in this, <laughs> as I am truly the runt of the family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, as I've been contemplating this for a long time, I, I thought this is the last time I will be able to address you as your city attorney. And I thought, what would I say? And I came up with three thoughts that I'd like to share with you. The first thought, first thought. When I first came to town 28 years ago, the city attorney then, John Richardson, who by the way, parenthetically, as Sarah <laughs> likes that word, uh, parenthetically had the job from the early 60s up until then. So tech, you know, basically two attorneys have done this work since, what, for 40 or 50 years. Uh, when I first came to town, my first assignment was to resolve an issue in which the city commissioners had sued a city commissioner and that city commissioner in turn sued the city commission. 
and we resolved it. You know, it was in front of Judge Doty, and it was a long, long time ago, back in 87 or 88. But it was emblematic of the problems of the time. This was a divided city. There were issues all over the place. Uh, it was uh, difficult to have city meetings because there was so much contention between the commissioners and commissioners and staff. And I raise that because it, it's good to look back and see how far we've progressed. Uh, in the last, I don't know, decade or two, the city commission has turned into a problem-solving, efficient, consensus-driven servant organization of the city. When things were upset, not much happened. Occasionally, some, you know, we got a business, and I think one of the first ones was when fashion came to town, and Scott Bird and I worked on that. But truly, when, when the leadership was divided, not much good happened for the city. And it is so much better now. Out of this, I learned slowly, because I'm a slow learner, that you are the leaders of this community. Seems obvious, but there's a couple of things that aren't quite. Nobody else can do what you do, and leadership and progress in this community is totally dependent on this city commission. You are the necessary ingredient, and there's nobody else that can fill that role. Once I accepted that and understood the centrality of you and your organization, your predecessors and all, it became obvious that I wasn't just representing a client. I was representing an organization that helped people in this community. And it became something of a cause, not just an attorney-client relationship. And it became so much easier to represent this organization because I understood how necessary success was to fulfill your goals, and your goals are the community's goals. That's an important point to remember, and it raises the issue with Linda. The second point, and this is something I don't think the public understands, and it is this. The, the component of will and determination that staff has to bring every day to make this city a success goes well beyond what most people understand. Uh, the city is a unique organization in that we not only have to have to be right in our decisions, but we have to do right in getting to that decision. And in this process, it's all open to the public. The media is here almost always to report on it. It's different than business because we have a, a citizenry that we're responsible to every day. And in, in that environment, the will of city staff and the determination and the effort that they have to put forward to make this city a success is well beyond what people understand. And it comes from the top. When I first came to town, I worked for Lyle Drescher. And I think I've worked for seven or eight. Lyle, by the way, gets the award for the best dressed hands down. Even Richard agrees. <laughs> Uh, and, and you know, there were a number of, of, of city managers. This city manager is one that expects excellence and gets excellence. And that level of determination has increased since he's been here. And then I've seen city staff reflect that leadership. And I, I just want to emphasize that you in your position get to see that. Not many other people in the city do and they really don't understand how much different this organization is than virtually every other organization in the city. I was thinking about Lonnie King, uh, the leader of Fashion Inc., uh, the president CEO. Uh, he has staff meetings. They come to good decisions. They're having a fantastic year, by the way. Uh, but his staff meetings aren't covered by the press. They aren't out in the open. He doesn't have the media coming in. Not every decision that he makes uh, is, is debated in the public. It's a different environment. In that environment, this staff serves you well. And I, I would like to say that's always been the case. Truthfully, when the city was divided, when leadership was divided, staff was divided. Uh, but that's changed to the better. And so when you meet people in the public, my request of you is to uh, let, give people a glimpse at the the effort that city staff has to take. And the interesting thing to me 
is that I know staff right now is working on problems that aren't going to be apparent for another year or two. We're solving problems that are way in the future. Uh, problems that we've solved now, we were working on two and three and four years ago. Uh, the depth of knowledge and the continuity of problem solving is truly impressive, and the public does not understand that. Uh, in short, we are a very good value uh, for what we provide to citizens, and that's a story that needs to be told. My third point, my final point. I've served you for a lot of years, you and your predecessors. I've seen examples of leadership that just astound me to this day, and I've, I've been a part of it, but I've watched leadership. Uh, you know, we have a new road that goes up to Lawrence because uh, Blaine Finch and Gene Ramsey decided to push that and push that hard. And it took a lot of years and they got it done. Through that, I've served you, and that service is ending. Uh, your new city attorney or your interim city attorney is going to be Blaine Finch, and he's truly an astounding man. He brings a lot to the table. Uh, I know he's stuck up in the legislature now, uh, Topeka hell as I like to call it, <laughs> um, but he'll be getting out and he'll, he'll be here. Uh, one thing that I think is necessary is that in order to serve you and to serve staff and to serve this community, you have to be a part of this community. You have to be down here because the problems don't stop eight to five and you've got to invest yourself in the people's lives here. Uh, I kind of have a shorthand for it. You can't see Ottawa in your, rear view, in your rear view mirror every night. You just can't and serve the community well. You can be a good lawyer. It can be an attorney-client relationship but you don't get that added value of somebody that can go out and solve problems. I see that as a real asset. I think Blaine will do well. I will tell you that I served him when he was the mayor, the youngest mayor in Kansas at the time. Uh, since then, I've been hounding him and telling him that this is the best job for an attorney in this county. You get to do the most good for the most people. It's not gonna make you rich, but it is very rich existence. And he's, I, I believe he believes that. Uh, I've been trying to get him interested in the city attorney job uh, for at least a decade. Uh, and I will tell you that all along he's been interested. I would just ask you to give, give him time to develop his relationship with you and with staff because that's necessary. A singular note is that between uh, John Richardson and myself, I think we've got what, since the early 60s to now, whatever time frame that is. It doesn't have to be that long, but it does need to be long enough to develop that relationship with you. And that's my, my, my request, since I'm bowing out, is that you give him time. And I know if you give him time, he will do mm -hmm. a good job. He brings much to the table. And I will tell you candidly, much that I don't. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank my wife and family who I am really pleased that they are here and uh, I hope to have a good life and I hope you have a good life too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was well said, Bob. I appreciate that. You know, someone asked me once in the bank, who do you work for? You work for the president, you work for the board, no, you work for the stockholders. The stockholders are who you're answered to, and I think about that, what we do here, we've got 12,800 stockholders in this town that we answer to, and every morning I get up, I think about that, that those are the people we answer to, and you're right on track with the stockholders, how we look at that, and that's a good way to look at it. So, I know we've got uh, Gene here and Blake's here, some previous commissioners, I don't know if anyone else in here, previous commissioners. We have a whole wall of pictures up here that I know would appreciate everything you've done for us too, Bob, so thanks very much, and we're gonna miss you, we no doubt about it, but good luck to you. Thanks for being here. Uh, next on the agenda, report by city manager, I guess. I don't have anything else. Okay, how about report by the commissioners? Uh, Linda, we'll start with you if you have anything. Well, I get to be the first one to say, <laughs> to thank Bob um, for those all those years and all that <coughs> service and um, the commitment that you've put into the job. I don't think there's any way we can put it into words how much we appreciate that, so thank you so much. I wish you would have at least accepted a plaque from us. <laughs> <coughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Go ahead, John. 
I wasn't. I didn't know we could have a, a city commission meeting without at least three proclamations. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I guess we, we can. can. I didn't know that was a rule. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll also say uh, we will miss you. I not, not only will we miss having a great city attorney, um, but just like when Commissioner Jorgensen and Commissioner Ramsey stepped down, um, we lose an institutional knowledge, um, not just what happened, but why it happened, and the the reasonings behind certain things. And and that's what we'll miss, I think, even as much as. Um, as your presence, but also uh, from from our perspective, one thing that pe most people don't see is what goes on behind the scenes, the things that are happening months in advance, or the things that are happening, um, the kind of the underbelly of, of what's happening. And often I feel like you and Richard are like a, in an action movie, back to back, walking through, uh, you know, <laughs> protecting each other's back, but at the same time taking care of the things um, that are happening in the community. Um, Law is not my profession, and I'm glad it's not. And I'm glad you took that, and, and Blaine took that um, responsibility, because um, it's, it's important for us as a community. Um, but we thank you for the proverbial bullets you have protected uh, the city as a whole from. Um, you really have um, looked at the best interest of the city, not just of, of us, but of, of all our citizens. So thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Well, Bob, obviously had very little time to work with you, but I certainly you in the paper for years and I deny it all and I can say that as a citizen of Ottawa I certainly appreciate all that you uh, give to the community thank you very much okay. Sir? you know when I began um, on the City <coughs> Commission I was uh, working in the legal field and I had a, uh, a picture kind of in my mind um, drawn on how attorneys act and um, how attorneys uh, behave on a daily basis and Bob you have dispelled dispelled every myth <laughs> because actually um, I have so enjoyed you sharing your knowledge with with me really I mean you have taught me and I feel like I'm a better person knowing you um, I don't necessarily think that I'm gonna miss the Notre Dame sweater I just want you to know so Jetty congratulations on seeing that to yourself um, but I will miss Bob's word which uh, probably about a year ago I kind of coined it seemed like every single meeting Bob came in with a different kind of razzy word and parenthetical probably still is my favorite word that he says because he'll say that every once in a while and I'll, uh, I'll think in my head that's Bob's word for the day and so I would always try and find a new Bob's word every time we'd have a meeting and he would come up with a lot of them I have a whole list um, <laughs> of Bob's words um, but Jetty, uh, we want you to know that we are now giving you full access, including Monday afternoons, to probably the best golf caddy you'll ever, ever have. So please enjoy all your time on the green. We will miss you. Thank you. Great. No, that's a good deal. Uh, my only report uh, is I just wanted uh, this last weekend we had a life care event at OMA. It was great to have that in that facility and use that continuously like we have been. It was a great event with uh, Pam Tebow uh, here with uh, uh, speaking about her issues and her a advice to abort Tim when he was uh, still in her womb and she didn't and look where he turned in. So I'm just really uh, very pleased with the, the turnout, the great message that was given. A lot of people here locally worked hard to make this thing happen. Michelle Richards was in charge of it, Terry Seeger, Paula Payne, a Life Church Praise Band and also Eternity Focus, a singing group from Lebanon, Kansas that was here. So it's a great event, uh, just great to see our OMA being used and utilized and, and a great, great turnout from everybody. A lot of out-of-towners were there too, so we love having out-of-towners in town. I think that's great. But anyway, I think that's all I had. Uh, announcements on here, you'll see we got a study session on Monday. We have the Kalia on-site assessment. that will be 6 p.m. here in City Hall, so we'll have a chance to give a verbal presentation next Monday night at 6 o'clock. Um, of course, our other study sessions, the Federal Communications Town Hall meeting on the 15th, here also at 7 p.m. And uh, you see other things on the announcements there will meet, be coming up uh, shortly. So uh, is that all we have? Anything else before the commission day? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will so move. Is there a second? I'll second. And all in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.